Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of the Daily Run and today we're playing as Kane. Kane has to be one of my favorite characters in the game just because he does start out with a key and the lockpick trinket item which makes him that he can open a golden chest for free and if the first floor is mean to you and doesn't give you any keys then you can open a golden treasure room on the second floor as well just because you do have that starting key. Uh, but besides that we got a pointy finger item, I'm not really sure how it's called exactly even though we just said what its name was on the screen, but regardless, um, the, the pointy finger item is basically in any direction you point the finger at, it deals damage to any, da any, any enemy that is basically in the line from the finger to the end of the room. It basically has infinite range, it goes over rocks, it's also a penetrative shot so you can damage multiple enemies at once, but the only downside, if you can call it a downside, is that it deals very low damage. The, the damage ticks seem to be actually quite fast, which means it's very useful for putting out things like fires and poops etc, just because it does have that unlimited range. Uh, the, and maybe the other downside is that you can't really control it, it's basically always dealing damage and sometimes it's nice to stop shooting because you know, you, you might have flies in the room which explode and if you have an item that just deals automatic damage they can explode in your face and that's not something you necessarily want. Uh, but besides that, it actually seems like a very decent item. Um, it does definitely change the way you play the game because basically the finger deals damage or is pointing in whichever direction your character is facing. So if you move with WSD or your cursor keys, depending on where you shoot, the finger is generally gonna follow along, but because you kind of want to optimize how much damage you do and as well you kind of have to move through the rooms, it becomes quite a interesting, I guess, challenge to keep the finger pointed at the enemy and still actually shoot them with your tears, which is, which is one of those things that I really like about items. And I have to say just from this a very brief period of just trying it out. It seems to be one of my favorite items so far, at least in Afterbirth Plus. I also like the physics of it, how it wiggles when you actually move your character around, that's really fun. Um, okay, so the, the last Devil Deal had the My Shadow item, and I don't know if you can see him because he's very dark, but basically there's a shadow following behind. I'm not really sure what he does. Uh, I've had him for the whole run, all, all I noticed is that he follows me around. Sometimes he glitches out and he just stops following me for whatever reason. I guess it's nice that I'm not alone in this and I have a body of sorts that just kind of follows my every move, but at the same time he doesn't seem to do anything. I'm not really sure if he deals any contact damage, but then again, if he only did contact damage, then that's basically the same as the lost fly, I think. Basically the, the fly item which follows you around and deals damage on contact. Uh, but if it doesn't seem to do anything other than just be there, it doesn't seem to attract enemy aggro, it doesn't seem to uh, deal damage, it doesn't seem to shoot, it doesn't seem to basically do anything. Maybe it's like, like I have, I, I literally have no idea. I'm trying to come up with things that it could do, but looking back at it, I, I just... I just can't tell. Uh, that doesn't matter, we still have the pointy finger item so everything is okay. Uh, we also got the bean and the bean didn't really change from Afterbird and I guess bean is one of those staple items in the sense that one of those items that isn't really gonna change just because bean is kind of the same since ever the original Isaac came out and when you use it you just explode and you poison the enemies around you. And actually the bean is quite a, quite a useful item, not a lot of people give it credit even though it can really not carry a run, I guess, but it, it can be really helpful because it essentially just damages your enemies a bit, it weakens them and then you can finish them off with your shots. Um, but b besides the bean, we, this, this run hasn't just really been very kind to us. We got some of, some nice utility items like dip pockets, which is always great. We also got a new trinket, the toilet paper one. I'm not really sure what it does again. I imagine it has to do something whenever you destroy poops maybe, or maybe it has something to do with poops, or maybe I had something else, but I, like I said, I haven't figured it out and you know, that's part of the fun of whenever you're playing a new mod. Uh, you will find, uh, I mean not the new mod, but the new DLC, you'll find items and you won't know what to do. I'm just sticking with it in hopes that maybe something crazy will happen, obviously, but so far nothing super crazy has happened in Afterbirth Plus, at least not to me yet. Uh, this is also the third run that I've played, and one thing I've noticed, and one thing that was actually addressed by Edmund himself, is that there, there are a lot of portal rooms. And I think portal rooms are actually an, a fun, different challenge what, what, than what we were used to. It definitely seems that Afterbirth Plus is harder than the previous installments, and I think the main reason for that is just because it has a lot more enemies, of, obviously, that we don't really know, but also it has a lot more combinations of rooms which seem harder to dodge. Uh, and the portal rooms I've noticed that they are quite frequent, but they never were really a problem to me, even in weaker runs. The only one that was very annoying was, I think in, on this floor it just spawned a bunch of fat bats, and obviously they have just a ton of HP and before you can actually deal with one, they block the shots, so you can't really shoot the portals as well. And in the end it just turns out that it's like this clusterfuck and mess of, of you trying to kill the portals, but you can't because there are too many enemies in the room, and it's just, you know. 
N not the best, but other than that, the early portals seem to be actually quite balanced, at least in my experience. So I don't know what's up with that. Maybe they changed something already, or maybe they didn't. But but what do I know? You know, I'm just playing the game. This is only my third run, so take my, not advice, but I guess my opinion with a grain of salt. We also managed to find the red forget-me-now, and I'm not really sure what it does again, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but because it has a one-time use, I imagine it's something really powerful, like a forget-me-now. Um, and I plan on actually saving it. I'm gonna use it, I think, on the womb floor. Well, I know when I use it, because I, I obviously played the run already, but I'm just m maybe paraphrasing what I thought at the time when I had it. So I planned on using it on the womb floor, because, you know, it's red, you know, maybe it has connotations with abortion pills, and when you're in the womb or the utero, maybe you, you can use it there, and maybe something happens, maybe you get, like, a bunch of items, maybe you can, maybe you get a chance to find an alternative boss or whatever. Uh, so, so it just seemed to make sense at the time. Obviously, there's always a, a, a chance that this would just wreck your run, but we have, that, that's a risk we have to take, you know, I wish I didn't have to take it in a daily run, but here we are, you know, I can just uh, leave the item behind. And I know some of you know what this item does, and and you're grinning to yourself because you know you, you know what's gonna happen, but for the rest of you who haven't seen this item yet, you're, you're in for a big treat in just about two minutes, uh, you'll see what happens. Uh, we also got the duality item, and the duality items was seemed very cool. It basically split us. One of one half of us was light, and one half of us was dark. And what happened at the end of the floor after I got the item? Or basically, I'll say, every time that you would get a Devil Deal or an Angel Room, you get both. And then you actually choose to which one you go. And basically, whenever you go to one, the other one closes. So, so that's quite a neat item concept, I think, because... Now, first of all, if you need to do angel rooms for whatever reason, there's that option, and obviously you can still pick devil deals and still have a chance to get angel rooms because you have these items. So I think that's great. But obviously, just in in due to um, j just like as a design perspective, I guess because. It, while you're playing, you know, the Angel Room pool is a very defensive and the Devil Deal Room is very offensive, so if you have a lot of offense and you maybe feel like you don't have enough HP, you would rather go to the Angel Room because they, there you get a free item, you know, some defensive items. Uh, or if you feel like you're really strong and that maybe you have too much HP, then you would go to the Devil Deal. So I really like the concept of this item and, and how it works, and I really like that it just doesn't give you a Devil Deal on, on every floor like Goathead. Uh, but that you can actually do combine it with Goathead to get an angel room basically every single floor. And I think that, that's, like I said, that's a very novel and great idea, and I'm, I'm happy to see that something like that has went into the game. And I'm really happy about these small items, they don't seem to do much, you know. I items like the pointy finger is basically a rehashed penetrative shots and spectral tears, and, and the duality item is basically Goathead. Not, not Goathead, but it just basically gives you yet another room. But I really like those small changes, because I think they add a lot of dynamic options to the game. So here I use the red pill, which is what I said before, and you can see nothing happens and then we just die. <laughs> we just we just die, you know? Like, the, the, the title on the, on the item was Plan C, so I had an idea that it has something to do with, like, killing yourself or maybe killing someone else, but what apparently this item does is just kills everything in the room, including yourself. So it's very useful if you go in Hush Fight, obviously you just use it and just kill everyone, but you need to have a way to respawn yourself. And in those situations, that item is useful. And of course, that's the deal with shop items. In some situations, they're useful. In some situations, they're just not useful. And because we did find it in a shop, it does follow that philosophy. And I'm kind of upset I didn't see that before, maybe realize that before, but we still had to use it, you know. It made sense to me to use it on the womb floor or the utero floor because obviously it was red. It had something to do with, like, abortion. And because we're in the womb, obviously it's red again, so... Things just made sense at the time, but we died and, you know, we finished in 136th, which isn't that bad, but then again, you know, everybody is new to this, nobody really knows what they're doing, so the leaderboards are a total mess, uh, even though, like I said, 140th is a very solid rank in the sense that a lot of people, not a lot of people get up there, that's probably like to top 2%, top 5%, top 10% even, uh, and I think anything like about top 5% is obviously very good. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys, and I hope to see you next time.